Hey everybody, it's Denise with Wonder Bar Crafts. Today I made a little storage envelope. It is a Tracy Fox altered mailer envelope. And I used my friend Amy, Crafty Cat USA's, her very first digi kit. She asked me, she sent it to me and asked me if I could do something with it. So this is kind of what I came up with. I have some upcoming projects on my list and one of which is a vintage garden journal for a friend of mine. And I thought this one would be perfect in it, but I wanted to show this kit before I even get started with doing some stuff in the vintage garden journal. So I went ahead and made this up so I could store the ephemera that comes in the kit. And I used her background papers to make the actual envelope itself. So, I just wrapped it with some sari so that way I have a place to store some, some sari that I'm, I'm going to use in the project. Of course this probably won't even be half of what I use but and this is what I came up with. And I'm sure if you watch Tracy Fox, she did, she shows you how to make this, but I'm going to, I'll give you all the dimensions that I used for it, but this is not my original design. It is Tracy Fox's. So in this kit, she had three background papers, and what I did was, she had one with a journaling page, one that has a, this beautiful background on it with the stripes and the beautiful roses. And I just printed it on the back side of the journal page. And I'm going to need three of them for this kit. So I think I can do it in two, but I printed three just in case. And then this background sheet, which I love. I love this lady in this big, beautiful pink rose. And then you also, in there, get um, quite a few postcards and a little sleeve, pocket sleeve, for, you know, your tags or postcards if you want to put them in there. So you get like one, two, three, three postcards, then the back side, so you could glue them either to the back or you could just decorate the back. And that's, I think that's what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to use some of her what's left over from my scraps and stuff to do a collage on on the back side of the postcard. And then this picture, which you could either use as a postcard or just a, you could cut this out, fussy cut it, use it however you like. And then it comes with a little envelope, a little mini envelope. And some tags and some card journaling cards. And then what I did with the extra scraps is I cut out a couple extra little tags that I will decorate later that I had left over from the front and back side. But I, I made a little belly band here to store them until I'm ready to use them. I thought this was a good way to use this for now instead of it just sitting until I was ready to go. I because the like I've said before with these digi kits, the awesome thing is you can print them again. So I printed them, and now I have a little storage area. When I make the journal, I can also throw this in the journal as an extra little. I can throw some extra tags and some ephemera for the actual journal itself. Then you get a couple little tickets of these kind, and then some little bus tickets on here, front and back sides, and a couple little flags, which you guys know I love doing the flags, I love making altered paper clips with them. So I'm going to show you how I put this together. Now this isn't something you have to do, 
with this kit. I just wanted to show that there are alternatives if you have a kit and you cut everything out and you're like, gosh, I, I got all these little... If you were like me, I, I put used to put everything in little Ziploc bags. And it gets expensive to buy little Ziploc bags all the time. And so it was just a great way to use what I had, put it all together, and have a storage place for it till I'm ready to use it. And it and it takes up very little room. And I don't it has its its own it's a it is its own container and I don't have to use up Ziploc bags. And I also made a little um, I used some wax paper and made like a little faux glassine bag front here to put some of my little scrappy pieces to, that I can use for collaging. So I have everything stored in here in one little place. And it just all folds up, a little tab in the front, and then you could just leave it like that and store it. I mean, look how thin that is. You put it in a drawer, you put it in a, in a little basket, wherever you store your things and not waste plastic Ziploc bags, right? So, I'm going to pull out my cutter because I need the big one for this because I've got long pieces to cut. So hopefully you guys can see this. And I wrote down all of, and hopefully you guys can see this. I'll kind of pull it up a little bit. You're going to need, from the first sheet, you're going to cut a five and a half wide by ten and a half high. So, if you're using standard eight and a half by eleven or A4 paper, there's plenty of paper for the first from the first sheet to make this. Then from and then you're going to have long strips, which you can use those scraps to make your smaller pocket strips. From the second sheet, cut out two five and three quarter wide by three and a half high pieces, and those are the side flaps. And then from wax paper, or you can use parchment, cut a six and a half wide by three and a half high. From your remaining scraps, you're going to want to cut one strip that's five inches wide by two high, one strip that's four and a quarter wide by two high, and that's inches, and then one strip that's one and a quarter wide by three and a half high. And then you're going to need one little piece that's one and three quarters wide by one high and that's the front little tuck piece and of course you don't have to do this you could make cut out a little circle my circle punches I think the smallest one I have is an inch and a half and I and I thought that was a little bit too big for the front so I just went ahead and took one square piece and then rounded the corners for it all right and then I've got the scoring information on the back so you will need a scoreboard for this project as well so my first sheet, what you want to do is figure out what portion of the sheet you want as the middle. So you could literally, I could literally flip this to the other side and have this on the inside. But if you're going to do anything that has stripes or lines, if this is going to be your inside, you're going to have to make sure that you have enough papers to cut so that your lines all go the same. Because I found that in this one, you're really you're looking at the inside and even though the stripe I wanted the stripes to go this way because it folds over and so that's on the outside if you were to flip that over on so that this was on the inside you would want to make sure that these all went the same direction I mean you could do it the other way if you so wanted it's totally up to you it's your project right <laughs> but I'm gonna do it the way I'm gonna show you guys how I did it here so I want five and a half wide And see, I've got my little strip piece by, let's see, ten and a half. So I want to keep this beautiful rose on there. And we'll just cut off a little bit from the top. Alright, so this is my long piece that's on the inside. I'm going to set that aside. Here. And then I need two 
two pieces that are five and three quarters wide. Now, because your sheet is eight and a half, you're not going to get two five and three quarter inch wides. You could make this smaller and go five inches if you want, but your postcards are not going to fit inside of it because a standard postcard is 5.8 inches. So what is that? Five point uh, five and like seven eighths, I think, or something like that, or it's something along those lines <laughs> for a standard postcard. So what I am going to do is do it, do it this way. And let's see, I want a beautiful piece of this rose as one side. So what the only thing I don't like about this big cutter is you miss those little inch marks between five and a half and six. So you kind of got to mark it. And I think what I did was took my ruler and made sure from the edge of here where my five and three quarters from the blade edged out. So right there. You know, you buy these things in hopes that <laughs> you don't have to go through and do all that and you end up doing it in anyway. Alright, and I think I cut that wrong. Did I? Well, that's going to go. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. And then it needs to be three and a half. There's one pocket side, and then this one I do believe is the same length, right? And then I need to cut it. So I want a little bit of this ribbon in there. There we go. Okay, and then I need one strip. That is five and a half wide, and that's going to be the inside pocket. So I like this ribbon in here, and that's what I did before, was I cut that ribbon. So let's see, I need it two inches. So I will, both pieces are... Okay, there's two, and then five inches wide. I think I want a sparkly piece on there. I hope you guys can see all this. I'm trying to see if I can um, make sure I'm in the camera. Okay, five and a half wide, and then I need a four and a half piece. Because I made my uh, left hand pocket a little bit smaller than my right hand pocket. Just so, um, because I how I clipped my corners, I put that decorative stitch, or decorative punch around the side, so I didn't want it hanging off the edge. And I didn't need a whole big strip. You could just not do the corners and make it longer to fit that left-hand side if you so sh so choose. All right, and then I need a strip that is one and a quarter by three and a half. So I want. Let's see how big is this? How long is this? Four. and a quarter. Yep. And then I want Okay, and then I need this. I want this.
this piece here because that's my belly band. By one and a quarter. And then I can find a small piece that is I think this is one inch. It's one and a half. I can go. Um, all right. Let's do this. All right. And then I need one and three quarters. And this is that front little piece that tucks my top part of my envelope down. Oh, psh. See? I don't like that. That's okay. I'll use the smaller one to even it out. Oh, goodness. new blades for my pieces for this little thing today. Seems to be doing all right, but I just, I know that Flaskers makes a longer one, but I just wish they would make them all standard long for a standard piece of paper so you can cut either direction, right? <laughs> okay, so these are all the pieces that I need, and I did get it out of two sheets. I have an extra one, so I'm going to set that aside, and I have all my little scrappy pieces left over that I can cut down, I can use for collage to store in here. I can get at least a tag, maybe two out of this. Well, two short tags or one thinner. I can cut it down and use a thinner tag. And then all my little scrap pieces I want to use for collaging, right? <clears throat> Set those aside. And I'm just going to show you guys how I put this together and, you know, I'm not going to recut all the little pieces, it, that, all that fussy cutting. I'm sure you guys don't want to watch a bunch of fussy cutting, so. Alright, so let's put those aside. Those are the pocket pieces. We're going to score, and here is what I put down for scoring. So, if you guys want to pause it you, so you can write it down or, or whatever. For your big piece, from the bottom up, when I say the bottom, this is the bottom piece of your, this is the flap that's going to come up. So from the bottom up, you're going to score at three and a half, then you're going to add a quarter inch and score, then you're going to add another three and a half and score, and then another half, a quarter and then score. Okay, so three and a half, score at three and a half line, and then really that would be three and three quarters, but just add a quarter, then add three and a half more inches from this score line, then add a quarter. I hope you guys can understand that, because really what that would end up being is, if you have a big long one, which I don't have, you would score at three and a half and then three and three quarters and then at what six um seven and a quarter and then at seven and a half if that makes sense if you added all that together <laughs> it's just easier for me to know that I just you know score from there so because I have to move mine kind of along so I redo it at the three and a half mark and then at the the two smaller ones I'll I'll go I'll show you this card again when we go through that. Let's go ahead and score this one. Put my goal my readers on so I can see the little lines. So I'm gonna find my three and a half mark, three quarter half, and score. And I am scoring on the opposite side because I'm gonna fold it up. Because this is gonna be my inside. 
and then I want to score at a quarter one quarter up which is actually three quarters okay so then what I typically do is kind of fold it up a little bit and get it back into the zero mark so if you have a small one like I do this is kind of the easiest way I found to do this then I'm gonna hit the three and a half mark again and those of you who have a big board it would be at let's see three and three quarters six Seven and seven and eight quarter is where you would would you where you would mark, and then another quarter inch up. Score it again, which would put you guys at seven. Let's see, six, seven and a half. Okay, so that's that piece score. So now we can. Go ahead and fold it and what that does is it kind of gives it a little bit of a gusset and space in there so you can fill your envelope and I believe you can mail these when I weighed it with all the stuff in it it was only one and a half ounces so I think I, can, I don't even I don't even know how many ounces are in the normal letter anymore That is how that's going to go. So that is our outside, our over flap, our under flap, right? So I'm going to go ahead and you don't have to. You can round the corners. You can leave them square, do whatever. You could even, if you wanted a pointy tip, take this, measure it to the center, and then what I would do is take a ruler from this point to this point and just draw a line and then cut that portion off. And then you could have a pointy ended ended envelope. And this just gives some fancy decoration around the envelope. All right. Voila. Okay. <laughs> so now we're going to do our two uh, fold out pieces, the fold out corners or flaps whatever and you just need to figure out which side you want for what now on the other one I put this one on this side so I think I'm going to do the same because I want to be able to just put the belly band so you can still see the beautiful graphic and then I want to look at this and make sure my writing is going in the same direction so I'm going to put that one like that so this is my left okay so score this on my left side at you would go all the way to the five and then a quarter further so five and a quarter and mine does go to five and a half on this one <clears throat> so at my five and then at a quarter And then on my right side, I'm going to score it at a half. And then at a quarter. So that would be at three quarters. So a half and then at a quarter, which is three quarters of an inch. I do not have centimeter markings on this, so I couldn't even tell you. I. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even think these scoreboards, I don't think I've ever seen one with, well, this one's got centimeters up the side, I think, and down along this corner, but I don't even know. Like, it's like all those little millimeters in between. Oh, good, goodness, goodness, goodness. I don't know. <laughs> we can put this up for now. Let me get a wipey because that big cutter, I don't know if you guys have the same issue, but those long silver bars on it, because they grease them, I think, they're packed with grease, 
get your hands a little dirty. So, all right. <clears throat> now, what I want to do is take some glue and at this, before this score mark here, this half inch is what's going to get glued to my base here. If I can get my glue to come out. Yeah, I seen she showed me that I was so excited to see it. I'm so excited for her. And she really does like this vintage. You know, she has a she loves the vintage look and and I was just so excited to see it and I love it and I think it's going to be perfect in that vintage garden journal that I'm going to be doing. Just going to put it in there and then just pull it up so it is even with the edge here and make sure that you fit that between the the inside gus or the inside score marks. So, you know, you have your outer ones and then the two inner ones. So that's where you want to fit it right in there. Right? So that when you fold it in, it should fold in. And then we're going to do this side, same thing. little glue monster running around in there. I'm going to screw up my stuff. So no, no, not today. Okay. And then let's pull it up to where it is even. Like I said, I think you can, you know, still... You'd have to take it to the post office, I guess, and ask them. But it would be a great little gift to give someone if you wanted to fill it with some ephemera or whatever. All right. That is the outer portion of the envelope. See? That was quick and easy, huh? Now, where did I put my little side pieces? I thought I set them aside over here. Oh, goodness, Denise. Oh, they're up there. I'm looking in the wrong pile. Okay. So, where is my shorter piece? Here is my shorter piece. Now, if you want to... I'm going to clip my corners here. You could make this the full length, glue it, and then clip your corner so that it all matches and you could do that very very easily. I however just want a shorter pocket in here. That's going to go in there. Let me go ahead and clip my corners. Maybe if my thumb wants to work today. I like these little corner punches. I have another one too. It's decorative, so it gives a little, a little bit. It's those paper studio ones. And then the cool thing is, your little pieces are all down here. You could use them in shaker cards as like little confetti pieces. <laughs> all right, and then I'm going to. Uh, oh, let's see. I don't want to do this. I'm going to quarter punch. Oh, how do I want that? I don't want it even with that, so it kind of looks like it runs along. So I'm going to round just the bottoms. And the reason why I'm going to do that is, when I set it in here, I can have it shift all the way over here if I want, and it will meet up with that little loop there. But I, I'm not going to do that, but this just helps me remember that this is the bottom piece to my... Um, pocket. Today, 
was a gorgeous day. My son and I went out, had to go make a run to Hobby Lobby. So we drove uh, down to Sedalia, which is about uh, 20, 22 miles, I guess, from us. And it was, when we checked the temperature outside, it was 74. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's a beautiful day, beautiful, beautiful day. All right, which one is... Can I have an extra piece here? Am I missing a piece again? Denise, what did you do? Okay, five and a half. That's my... That's four and a half. So I don't know what that piece is. I think that's an extra piece. Okay. There's my five. Where is my... I bet you that's what I did was I grabbed this one and I put the other one over there. <laughs> okay. I know what I did. I set that big piece aside, that longer piece, and that was the piece I intended to use to cut, and I didn't cut it down for my belly band, so there it is. <laughs> All right, same thing with this one. I'm going to round my corners at the bottom, but I think I want to flip this so it looks like it's a big running piece of ribbon. And I, I like doing these. These are fun. I have like a ton of them. <laughs> that way, like if I have extras from a kit or I don't, I can just, I make them up and then store them. I have, you know, those, let's see, hold on, let me focus just a second here. I want to make sure this is even. There we go. Oh, psh. Those shoe racks that you can hang on the back of the door. So I went to Walmart and bought one and I store them in there. So then that way I have like some storage space and I can put all my extra little ephemera for the, a particular kit all together and not, I have some that I, I print out and I bundle them together because I'm gonna use them more frequently. And then I have other ones that I have leftover remnants so I can just open it up and grab them. So I love these things, doing these things with those because they're, they're very simple to, to make. And now the belly band. And I don't want to cover too much of that beautiful rose there, so. And you could certainly take and sew around and do some decorating if you want. But I just thought this was a fun, because she has done a video, and I, I will link her, not only her Etsy, where you can find this kit, but her YouTube channel. And she has a video showing how she, what she did with her kit. So, and I thought, well, I don't want to kind of do the same thing. I want to do is to show you guys that you can do other stuff with them. This is my front piece, and um, let's see. I kind of was hoping I could get it to match up a little bit. Um, hmm. Maybe we'll cut another little piece. So, I like the birdies. Let me cut a little piece for this. All right, there we go. And then I'm going to just round the edges. Maybe if my thumb. So then that way I can gauge where it will sit. Let's mark this halfway. Let's see, it is five and a half, so two and a half and two and three quarters is about the halfway mark. Give myself a little guidance there. 
so I know where to place that. And I just glue it like halfway up. So I have room for the tuck to go in there, for the top to tuck under. pocket in the front. What I did was I took, if I can find the piece, we'll get it to oh, there. I took a piece of wax and I uh, wax paper and you can use parchment on the front if you like. I have like you can get the white parchment at the Dollar Tree instead of the brown parchment and it's a little bit Thinner, so you can kind of see through it which I think would be pretty or you could use vellum but I, I use the wax paper and I cut it six and a half wide by three so that our pocket will be five and a half uh, five and a half by three and a half because we're going to fold it under and you could actually gusset this if you wanted so that it, you have some expansion. If you want to put more in the pouch, you can certainly do that. I just like a thin sleeve. It I can put my extra little pieces in there. On on the top, or on the right, bleh, Denise, <laughs> here we go again. <laughs> on the left side, we're going to score at half and just lightly go down it because you don't want to tear through it and then at the bottom turn it and then go half and then what I do is just turn it upside down and go half again Oop, I got a little crooked there we go Easily fixed. Okay, now, where are my scissors? I'm just going to cut this little square piece out so it folds in a little better. Just along the scored part there. Get that piece out. Just a smidge. Okay. And then we'll just fold it. Pretty easy. And you can leave it just a straight edge if you want. You can take some fancy scissors and cut a nice little jagged edge at the top if you like. You could use the top part that maybe you ripped off as a, like where this jagged edge, you could actually do that there to kind of give it some decoration. Or you can t do what I'm going to do and take a punch and let me find a, I know I have a scrap piece of paper around here somewhere. I will right, we'll just use this piece here. And I'm going to fit that just right behind the bag. And then take my one and a half circle punch. You can go smaller, larger, whatever you want. And depending on how big you want your notch. And I just, you can mark this. In fact, let me, this is five and a half. So two and three quarter. That's my center mark. So it's centered. And just take that and feed it a little bit through there. Try to make find that mark. And let's see, make sure it's even. Having that extra piece of paper behind the wax paper will your punch will go right through it. You won't have any problems with it. If you don't, you're gonna sit there and go uh, 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 and you're gonna tear up the wax paper. 
parchment you can do it fairly easy. So now <laughs> this is where I made the mistake last time and I, sh and I did it again. I punched the bottom of my paper and I should have done that last but I can go back over it if I want and that's what I'll do. So if you make that same mistake, don't sweat it, you can fix it. But what I should have done was glued that on there and then punched it because that's what I told you guys to do. <laughs> and I didn't even follow my own instructions, right? Good one, Denise. All right, I'm just gonna tack down with a little bit of glue those little flappy pieces and then just give it a squiggle. So we just want enough to kind of just hold it in place. So it's just a little pocket. It's not intended for anything heavy in there and just some scrappy pieces. So I'll just set it in here right at the bottom. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. My dog was trying to get way up underneath. I left the door open. Bad on me. So, and now I'm just going to do my corners again. So now it does not go into the bag. It will not affect how it how it how it works. And that is our little envelope. So now, just like this one, when you cut out everything from it, if you're not ready to use it right away, you can store all your little scrappy pieces, like all these pieces in here. But now I have a place for all my little scraps, all the pieces that were cut out from the kit until I am ready to use them. So now I have a storage space. And like I said, she's got this cute little it's a cute little envelope, or not an envelope, a pocket sleeve, right? All your postcards can be stored in there. There's a little envelope, you have a pocket for it, or you can arrange it any way you want in here. A little belly band to hold all your tags until you're ready to use your kit. And then, like I said, I just wrapped it up pretty with a little piece of sari. Because then that way I know this, this coordinates with this packet. And when I'm ready to use it, I have it available. And you don't have to do a piece of ribbon if you don't want to. You could use, uh, you could actually cut some scraps of, you know, if you, if you have a piece of, lace that you really want to use in the project and you don't want to misplace it good place to store it is in here you could add some additional ephemera that you know what you want to use with the kit that you think goes really well for your project and there you go i hope you like it i do adore this because and it's called vintage rose and i love the roses i love how she found these beautiful pink, the pink on the yellow. That is so hard to find roses that, that are like that. I just, they're very hard to find. Here, anyway, they are. And I just love the cute little birds and the, there's a little bit of glitter, not too much. And I love this back page. I don't know why, it just, it really is appealing. I love, I think it's the stripes with the rose, so. It is a beautiful, beautiful kit. She did a wonderful job with it, especially for her first ever Digi kit. So like I said, you get three background pages. You get um, all those postcards, the postcard backs, the flags, the tags, the journaling cards, the tickets, all in that one little kit. And it's, it's very, very, very affordable. So I will leave her link below. I hope you guys like it. I hope you try it out. Have a wonderful evening. Hugs, blessings, and plenty of love. Bye-bye.